Hi everyone, this is Ms. Segovia and I'm going to show you what to put on the notes for photosynthesis. So by now in your notebook, you should have an awesome page here with our cool little leaf that's got our arrows for what's happening during photosynthesis. But I still want you to have a few details in notes form. So, to keep your avid teachers happy, let's go ahead and set it up in Cornell style. So go ahead and draw your second line down and leave yourself a few extra lines for your summary. So sorry, there, there we go, the summary across the bottom. So the title of our notes today is going to be Photosynthesis. So where does photosynthesis all begin? It begins with the sun. So let's draw a fun little sunshine up in the corner. And if you have any markers or colors and you want to make your notes a little more pretty, you certainly can because color always makes it more fun. So with photosynthesis, nearly all living things They obtain energy either directly or indirectly so that means they either get it straight from it or through another source. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it better because I know some of you have a hard time. Nearly all living things obtain energy either directly or indirectly from the sun's energy. Now this doesn't mean you can just go sit outside in the sun and be like, mmm, I'm full. I've got tons of energy, now I can go run around. It doesn't quite work like that. Plants help us out quite a bit. So let's draw a cool little plant leaf some little veins on there and if, again if you feel colorful today by all means go ahead and add a little bit of sparkle to your notes so we want our pretty green leaf here plants use the sun's energy to make their own food plants use the sun's energy to make their own food. This is known as an autotroph. So that's a really good vocab word to know. And to break it down a little bit, the general meaning, this is definitely not direct, is self-eater. Auto being self, Trophine eater. So we can draw a little arrow here from the sun giving energy to my plant. So now how do you get the energy? Well if you're hungry you might eat a plant. So let's show it in nature. I'm pretty good at drawing cute little caterpillars. So let's make a little caterpillar give him some little adorable legs and that caterpillar he's going along he might be eating the leaf but unfortunately he might also get eaten himself so they're oftentimes consumed by birds so again I'm an expert bird drawer I've been asked to share my artwork in museums across the country and again if you're feeling artsy fartsy let's go ahead and, oops sorry we can add a little color to our birdie and you can add some more to your caterpillar and what color is this? Let's see. Oh, my caterpillar is purple. He's a very rare exotic caterpillar. So I've got my little caterpillar here. So the caterpillar, he is going to obtain energy not directly from the sun, but indirectly by eating plants. And even more indirectly, the bird, he's going to get the energy from the sun, so obtain, and notice I'm not using the word get, I'm saying obtain, because you got to get used to big words. So obtain energy by, oh this is sad, feeding 
on caterpillars. The bird finds them quite delicious and likes to eat them on a regular basis. So this is known as heterotroph, which in general means other eater. So plants get the energy on their own straight up from the sun, but our little bird and our caterpillar get the energy indirectly by consuming the plant. So let's talk about what is going on in our process. We, in order to have the energy in the first place, there has to be photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is the process by which a cell captures energy in sunlight and uses it to do what? To make food. Either for the plant itself or for other creatures who would like to consume it. And so the most common one we're going to talk about are the sugars. And then the most common sugar we'll refer to is glucose. So the formula for photosynthesis, if you remember from our plant, we have to have CO2 coming in. It's going to combine with the water. And it's going to yield or give us C6H12O6 and six O2 molecules, our oxygen. Now, how did we get to go from here to here? We gotta have a little bit of help. And we get that help from the sunlight. It provides the energy we need to be able to take our carbon dioxide molecules and our water molecules and rearrange them into our sugars and our oxygen. And so since this is a really important process, I want you to kinda of highlight that give it its own little box to make it really stand out in your notes because it's just so darn important. So photosynthesis actually happens in two stages. So let's write out our two stages of photosynthesis. In stage one, I'm going to draw a little line here to partition us. So in stage one, the chloroplasts, you remember under our leaf, you put the chloroplast in earlier. He's hiding right here under the bottom. Our chloroplasts in plant cells capture energy. And they do this using chlorophyll. And when we see chlorophyll, that is actually what we're seeing that makes the green pigment in our plants. It is the reason that plants are green. And the energy from here powers stage two, which is going to happen over here. So I like to draw in my little chloroplast though. So it's a little membrane bound organelle. Remember membrane bound organelles make our uh, pro or eukaryotes. So eukaryotic cells have little membrane bound organelles. And so I like to draw in here my little thylakoid membranes. So I know I've got myself a little chloroplast. So stage two happens but it's gotta have a little help. So first off, we have to have carbon dioxide, CO2, enters the leaves through stomata. Not to be confused with stigmata. So stomata, if you remember on our plant over here, were the little guys that you glued on the underside, the little openings, the little holes in our leaf. So it comes in through the stomata, and then we also have 
H2O enters through the roots. They, meaning the H2O and the CO2, undergo chemical reactions, which fortunately you don't have to know all the details about those, but if you take AP Biology you will. They undergo chemical reactions to produce C6H12O6, which is sugars, and O2. Now that oxygen that's produced doesn't hang out very long. It might actually get picked up by the mitochondria in the plant cell, but a lot of that oxygen, again not all, will exit through the stomata. And so that is kind of photosynthesis in about as much of a nutshell as I can put it. So in your notes, since you did these Cornell style, don't forget that I need you to go back in and add your questions on the left-hand column and then your summary at the bottom and then go running to your avid teachers and show them how awesome and beautiful your notes are. That's it for now. Thanks.